be your prayer as we come to the sermon today. Let those words sink in, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Lord, we do need you. We need you desperately. As we continue our worship, we need your word. We need your word to speak to us, to tell us how we should live and how we should love. Lord, there's some heavy text to go through today, and so I pray that you would uh, get me out of the way so that you can speak to your people. Oh, Lord, I pray more of you and less of me. Through Jesus, I come. Amen. I want to welcome you back to our series. From the Wild West of the Bible, the legendary book of what? Judges. For this first series of five messages, we met the flawed hero named who? Samson. Samson. His birth was announced by an angel. His super spirit-filled strength was beyond our imagining. He well could have been the most physically strong person who ever walked the earth in children's Bibles. Maybe you've seen pictures of Samson bulging with muscles, kind of a biblical Hulk Hogan. You young people don't even know who Hulk Hogan is anymore, do you? Do you know who Hulk Hogan is? They don't even know who Hulk Hogan Who's the strong guy now? Who's the strong guy? All right, I don't know them. Just imagine somebody with big bulging muscles. That's how we usually picture Samson. But you know what? What? Oh, Lyle. <laughs> Samson, Lyle. No, but no, but now, but now, listen, listen, listen. Uh, we find people in our day. They name their big dogs and their tough luggage after Samson. But sadly, we've seen in Scripture that Samson was actually shockingly weak. And in fact, one of the commentators I, I read about, or read to find out about Samson, he, he says, you know, actually I think Samson might have looked kind of like a little 120 pound weakling, kind of a milk toast type guy. Because people couldn't figure out why he was so strong. They looked at him and went, how does that boy do that stuff? We have a lot of physical descriptions of massive people in the Bible. Big biceps, deep chest, broad shoulders. Compare the description of Goliath. You all know Goliath. You remember when I had a life-size picture of Goliath here. How tall was he? You remember? Nine. Nine feet tall. We had that big, ugly picture of Goliath here. People, I got feedback saying, I'm so sick of looking at Goliath. I was like, good. You're supposed to be. Or King Og in Deuteronomy 311. You don't even know who King Og is, do you? He had, a, he had an iron bed, 11 feet, no, 13 feet long, 6 feet wide. Look it up later in Deuteronomy. Big people in the Bible, in fact, today we'll see people could not figure out how this guy could be so strong, but they were willing to try and figure it out. But here's the thing. Samson knew what made him strong. And because you've been with me on this journey, you know what made Samson strong too. God Almighty gave Samson his strength and God Almighty could take it back. Today we see the strong man making tragic moral mistakes, joking around and being lulled to sleep by a seductress. As I read each section by section as I prepared for this sermon, I couldn't help but sit there and yell, Samson, wake up. Hey, Samson, would you please just wake up? And so I bent that into your point under busted braids. Hey, Samson's, it's time to wake up. You'll notice a little S in there. You see, I, I believe all of us have a little bit of Samson in us. Maybe even a lot of Samson in us. And so we need that call. Hey, Samson, wake up. Now... 
I want you to interact a little bit. And so we'll do a little bit of call and response as we did a couple Sundays ago. So whenever you hear me say, hey, Samson, you need to say, wake up. Okay, we'll try. Hey, Samson. Wake up. See, that's good. That's good. Except Caden, that was a little too much. But, you know, I, in the past, I have, I have promised you, you know, if you've come here today and you're completely exhausted, I always give you the freedom to take a Holy Ghost-inspired nap during the sermon time because you're so tired. You, you, you're probably not going to get that this week because every now and then there'll be people yelling, wake up, at least I hope. Again, why are we doing this? Because we can all be Samson from time to time. And if as we move through this text and the points, it is my prayer that if God is trying to tell you to wake up today, that you will indeed. Now, I'd like you to open your Bibles to Judges. It's a book towards the front of your Bible. Judges chapter 16 is where we're going to start. It's on page 273 in your student Bible. If you forgot your Bible this morning, there are student Bibles on either end of the pews. They're there for you to use. If you don't have a Bible, you can own and, under, you, you own and understand. We want you to take that home as a gift from us to you. But for now, we just want you to open it up so we can get reading. I'm in Judges chapter 16. You folks are nice and quiet today. So why don't I just start reading? Chapter 16, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Please follow along. One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only till the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate together with, all the, with the two posts and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. On your outline, I got a little, little quote maybe that Samson said. Don't you see? Nothing can stop me. Don't you see? Nothing can stop me. Last week, we read the last verse in chapter 15, verse 20. We see that Samson led Israel for 20 years. Now, we have absolutely no idea how his judging career went for the country. But it's very obvious that he is unable to judge for himself right from wrong. You see, he would have had the law of Moses. He would have known the seventh commandment that in essence says, don't have sex with people you're not married to. No sex outside of marriage between a man and a woman. But Samson, you see, Samson believed he was above the law. He was a judge after all. It reminds me of this one time I was driving down Route 30 and I was clipping along. And all of a sudden, this car came up past me, just whoosh, right past me. And because I am who I am, I decided that I would try and catch them, see who they were. And so I speeded up and, and speeded up, and I got up so I could see him. And I was like, oh, it's the highway patrol. <laughs> but he didn't, have, he didn't have no lights on or anything. It was kind of an unmarked thing. And I was like, oh, oh, oh who, who stops him? Nobody. He's the law. That's how Samson felt. He thought nobody could stop him. He knew that he could fight or bust his way out of any trap because he was Samson. Now, why did he carry those doors to the top of the hill? Why did he carry them all the way up to the top of it? He ripped them off, carried them all the way up? Because he could. Okay? Because he could. He took them all the way up and threw them down and said, yeah, how about that? You tried to get me, but you couldn't. See? Don't you see? Nothing can stop me because I'm Samson. This scene is a setup for what is coming next. 
That's the danger, folks. Don't, don't ever just read one small part of your Bible. Try to find the whole story. And we're going we're gonna to try and capture the whole story. I know there's a lot of text today here. But verses 1 through 3 might make you scratch your head until you start reading the next verses that come. And you'll see that this was a setup for what's coming. But for now, I just want you to consider your application question. It's in italics underneath your fill in the blank. Have you ever experienced pride goeth before a fall? That's my misspell. Uh, it's not pride goth before a fall. It's goeth. That's old King James Version from Proverbs 16, 18. Have you ever set yourself up before? How about now? Are you setting yourself up even now? If you are, hey, Samson. Thank you. All right, here we go. Verses 9, 4 through 9. Verses 4 through 9. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing us, showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. <coughs> Samson answered her, if anyone ties me up with seven fresh thongs that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh thongs that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called out to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the thongs as easy as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame, so the secret of his strength was not discovered. Oh, Samson, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. If you play with fire, you're going to get burned. Samson is in love, or perhaps just in lust, again. But this time, friends, this time he met his match. Okay? This time, Samson has met his match. She wants to know the secret of his strength. Again, it wasn't obvious why he was so strong. So he tells her with a wink. Maybe he had his fingers crossed behind his back. Maybe he giggled a little bit. It was a lie. And I imagine Samson falling into a sleep, kind of laughing to himself. Ha, ah, she thinks she knows. She thinks she knows, but she doesn't. So he wakes up with a yell from his live-in lover, tied to the bed with shoestrings. Thongs aren't what you thought. They're actually shoe, shoestrings. It's what they tied their sandals on with. But it's no problem. It's no problem for Samson. Refer back to point number one. Don't you see? Nothing can stop me. It's not a problem for him. You see, he's in control. He has the power. And it's fun to make fun of people, isn't it? People love being mocked and lied to and deceived, don't they? Hey, Samson. In our world, where lying and sarcasm can easily be reframed as a joke, just being funny, watch out. Watch out, because what's funny to you might not be funny to the person you're messing with. I want you to look at the application question real quick. Have you ever had a dumb joke go bad? Have you? Mm -hmm. I know I have. Suddenly you're in a situation that's no longer funny. This is where Samson's going to be real quick. Let's keep reading. Verses 10 to 14. Verses 10 to 14. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now. Tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, 
I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, until now you've been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric and tightened it with the pin. Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. The slippery slope is always steeper than it seems. The slippery slope is always steeper than it seems. You can say that five times really fast to entertain yourself if you need to. You see, Samson believes nothing can stop him. He can play with fire. But did you notice? She has touched the hair. He, he let her in. He's given hints. She touched the hair. He's edging closer and closer to telling her. Friends, she's tying him up. Saying, how can I bind you? She's calling out his enemies. Does he know they're in the room or not? We're not sure. Hey, Samson. Wake up. But he can't see it. You think we have to wait until verse 21 for him to get blind. But you don't, because he's already blind. Samson is blind as a bat to what this woman is trying to do to him. But she's doing it, and he's not stopping her. He thinks he can taunt and tease Delilah. But she's wearing him down. She's coming in for the kill, but Samson thinks it's just a game. And he can't see that even if it is a game, he's losing the game. He'll just give a little bit more. He's still in control. He's still the funny man. But Samson is about to slip and slide his way down the slope of stupid and arrive in a whole heap of mess. The sad part is he doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know that he's begun the slide down. Hey, Samson. Wake up. Wake up. Are you on the edge of losing something significant? No. Are you on the edge of giving something away that you know you shouldn't? No. Are you on the way to doing something that you know you shouldn't, but you feel like you're still in control? You, you feel like, I, I can still handle it. I'm not there yet. Let's keep reading and see where Samson ends up. Verses 15 through 19. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you've made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I've been a Nazarite set apart to God since birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with silver in their hands, having put him to sleep on her lap. She called a man to shave off the seven braids of hair. And so began to subdue him. And his strength left him. Mm. Stubborn seduction can subdue the strongest. 
Stubborn seduction can subdue the strongest. Oh, friends, here it is. We see the strong man, and he's tired to death. Okay, let, let's review. Let's review. The man went out and caught 300 foxes, tied them together, lit their tails on fire. No problem. No problem. Probably didn't break a sweat. Killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. Got thirsty. Definitely got thirsty. Not real fatigued. Middle of the night, gets up, rips the doorposts off, door and doorposts off the gates of a city. No problem. Carry him to the top of the hill. But the nagging of his live-in tired him to death. Oh, my goodness. He's wiped out. The prodding and nagging. There's so much here, friends. Delilah says, if you love me, you'll tell me how I can kill you. Did, did, you, did you catch that? It wasn't exactly in her words. But she's, she's saying that. If you love me, you'll tell me. This is not a call for honesty in the relationship. She wants to capture him. She's tied him up three times already. Hey, Samson. Wake up. Did you know? Did you know that this is exactly how the devil works? He pokes, he prods, he wears us down, he nags, and he will. Unless, of course, you get up. Unless, of course, you wake up. I like to think, and you can call me on this later if I'm reading too much into the text. But why did Samson get up in the middle of the night when he was in Gaza? I believe it's because the Holy Spirit prompted him, poked him a little bit, and said, Hey, you need to get up. You need to get up. They're coming for you, boy. And he was sensitive to it. Samson could have went home from Delilah's lap, but he chose not to. He chose to lay in the lap of the one who wanted to bind him, who wanted to tie him and subdue him. Can I just ask you one question? Are you laying in somebody's lap right now? No. Are you laying in somebody's lap? Have you become comfortable or even comforted by some sin? Delilah represents the seductive sin that is lulling you to sleep. Application? Is it pornography? Are you laying on the lap of pornography as she whispers to you, it's okay, you're just having fun. It doesn't hurt anybody, really. You can stop whenever you want to. Are you laying on the lap of pornography? Are you laying on the lap of overeating? She whispers, oh, but you need to eat. It's a celebration after all. Have another piece of cake. Have another bowl of ice cream. Why don't you just have both? Why don't you throw in a bag of chips? Are you laying in the lap of overeating? Are you laying in the lap of gossip? She whispers, you're only telling the truth. It serves a right. No one will ever find out that I said it. And who cares if they do? You see, we all have a little bit of Samson in us. We all tend to think we're just a little bit stronger than we are when it comes to sin. But you need to understand we are as weak as Samson, but for the blood of Christ and his Holy Spirit in us. Hey, Samson. Wake up. We're going to finish out with verses 20 through 22. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. 
He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Prideful lust is pitifully blind. Prideful lust is pitifully blind. He never saw it coming. He never saw it coming, I'm convinced. And maybe he was, uh, woke up from his slumber humming the Taylor Swift song, shake it off, shake it off. He couldn't shake it. There was no shaking going on. He was tied up. I just want to note, I want you to look very, very closely at verse 19. The end of it says, what left him? Look at your Bible, don't look at me. What left him? Strength. But then, at the end of verse 21, it changes, and it says, who left him? Who left him? The Lord did. Oh my, this is so scary and so sad at the same time. I'm talking about a very rude awakening, people. I'm talking about a very rude awakening. Now, I'm going to go somewhere in this text, and you can talk to me afterwards if you don't like it, or if I don't bring it back around to where I need to, but can I just, can I just tell you something a little scary? The Lord left him, but hadn't Samson left the Lord? He was loving pagan women, disrespecting his parents, telling lies, and even touching dead stuff. He had left God. But friend, you need to know, you need to understand very clearly, that if you leave God, He will let you go. Okay? He will let you walk away. But He will always be calling you back. And I believe until you draw your last breath, he will always give you another chance. Please don't miss the symbolism in verse 22. Look at it really hard. Look at it really hard. Verse 22, but the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. God was giving back his strength very slowly. I wonder sometimes if Samson, in his gouged out blindness, doing his grinding, if he didn't reach up every now and then and go, Oh, it's coming back. Oh, maybe God still does have something for me. Because the hair kept growing. Can I just say that if there are any Samsons in the house today, it's time to wake up. I believe the Spirit woke him up in Gaza and he escaped the prostitute's place. But then he went right back to Philistine country with Delilah. He went right back. Why did he do it? I'll just ask you application number one. Underneath your fill in the blanks, prideful lust is pitifully blind. Have you become numb to the Spirit's nudge? Wake up. Is the Spirit telling you something today that you need to hear? Please don't close your heart to it. Don't assume it'll just go away or that you can just shake it off. Don't assume that, please. Because you might just be at number two. Who's trying to shave your braids? Is there someone or something in your life that's trying to shave your braids? That's trying to break that vital strength relationship that you have with God? What is it? Who is it? And how is it affecting you? Are you going to wake up or are you going to let them put you to sleep? I just need you to know that but for Jesus in my life, but for Jesus in my life and what he did on the cross for me in dying for me and for my sins and giving me the power of the Holy Spirit to live a redeemed life, I would be in a very similar prison to Samson. 
just grinding different stuff. And friend, I'm afraid you will be too. Oh Lord, that we would all wake up today. Let us pray. Lord, this is heavy stuff. And I thank you that you give us such a clear testimony of how much indeed we need you. Every hour we need you. Lord, for that Samson who's sitting here today, and I know that Samson come in both male and female. Lord, those who are, are toying with things because they think they're stronger. Whatever it is, Lord, if it's blocking their relationship with you, I pray that in Jesus' name it would be gone. I pray that they would wake up, turn around, and repent. And Lord, that you would restore them before tragedy happens. Oh Lord, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for your spirit that continues to nudge us and help us. Let us be faithful today with what you call us to. In Jesus' name and all God's people said.